Hey everyone, this is Maulia S. from RV College of Engineering, ISC, fifth semester. This is my project, Music Library Management System, and I'm doing this project with Pragati TR. So the first thing we're going to start off is by showing you how we form our connection. So here I'm using Warm Server to form the connection for the database. So here I'm going to go into PHP My Admin. Here I've already opened PHP My, My Admin, so I'm going to show that to you. And this is the database that I've created for my project. It's called Music DB, and it has all these tables. It has album. So I'm going to show you each of these tables. It has album ID, album name, the artist, and the genre. So first, let's start with showing you basic tables that I have with no foreign key references. So the first one I would be showing you is genre. Genre has genre ID and genre name. And then uh, the next part would be artist. Artist has artist ID, artist name, and artist description. The next one would be album. Album ID, album name, and it has the artist and genres referencing by foreign keys. So this is the album table. And um, the next one would be track. So track has tracks. I have 20 tracks here. Uh, track ID, track name, the year, the language, album artist genre referenced by foreign keys to their particular tables, and then the link. This link is going to have the link to the MP3 file of those particular songs. So that is the track table. And we, since we had normalized it, we have another table called track description being split. So that's relating the track ID with the track length. So for each of the tracks that I have, there is the track ID denoted here. So the next one would be playlist. This is a table for each of the playlists created by specific users. This is linked with a particular user ID. It has a playlist name and a playlist ID. Okay, so the next one is uh, consists. This is a relational table, which relates the playlist with the track ID. So basically it's showing us which playlists have how many number of tracks in it and it's denoted by foreign keys for track ID and playlist ID. So basically it's a relational table. Okay, the next one and the last one here is the user table. The user table is having user ID, username, user email, user mobile, password. Here I've shown you it's encrypted with the MD5 hash. So, uh, and then we have a role and then we have the permissions. Okay, so here in my database, I have one admin. I've created with the ID 1001. Admin uh, details are as listed. And since the role is, he's an admin, so I've given the role as an admin and permissions I've set it to one. Okay, so this is the user table. Now I'll show you the code for uh, the each of those PHP pages that we created. Okay, so let's start with the first one that was register. So the first one, uh, I'll go into my codes and then I'll open up the code which was responsible for forming the connection. So this is, I've named that as DB Connect. So here we're gonna form the database connection. So I've given up the uh, local, the server name, the username, the password and the database name. So database we're gonna link is MusicDB. So I've mentioned that here. And uh, MySQL I connect, we're going to form a connection here with those the local host root and the password and the database name. So, and then this condition is for if any error occurs during the connection, it's going to print the error. And yeah, so this is the database connection formed. So we we'll start with the first page, your register. I've already described what register and how to register a new user uh, in the previous video. So we will just uh, show you how it's implemented in the particular code. So um, I'll just go to the register part. Okay, so this is the register code. So like I said, since for registering, we need to form the database connection first. So I've included here database connection.php and we started a new session for this particular user. And uh, if it says session user ID, we have to go to index.php. So basically if the user is already existing. We need to go into the homepage for that particular user. So that's that. And then uh, this is for sign up. And we'll take in all the uh, names, email, mobile password, and confirm password through variables here. Uh, this is a command used to take in the input from the particular PHP page. So MySQLI real escape string. Uh, it form a connection and it'll take up the uh, values from the PHP page. This is done by dollar post username. All right, so that's the first part. And these are all the validation conditions that I've done. So basically, this is a regular expression that I've created to check whether the name is only alphabets in space. And this is uh, entering email, valid email ID, password, and confirm password if they're matching and all of that. So this is the database part of it, where if the connection is formed, so we need to insert that particular user into the 
uh, database. So yeah, so then it'll display the message successfully registered. And if there's any error, it'll just show you error in registering. So that's how your register page works here. Okay, so if you want, I'll just show you a demonstration of that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna create a new test and then I'm gonna have uh, test at test.com and then I'll just create a random mobile number. I'll give it a password. For now, I've just taken it as test one, two, three, four, but as you see, it's not gonna be shown here. So once I click on register, it says click here to log in because I've already registered and it was successfully registered. This is what it's gonna show. So now let's go back to the database and show if the user has appeared. So yeah, like I like I explained earlier, the new user that we created just appeared here. And then like I said, since it's an MD5 hash restricted uh, password, okay, wait, I'll show you that part as well. So this is the MD5 password uh, that we created so that the password can be encrypted. So we did that and then that's why the password is not showing up here. So you cannot reverse this process once this is done. All right, so this is how we created a new uh, user and we also linked it back to the database and this is how it appeared in the database. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, I'll go back to login page and I'm gonna log in as an admin first. So, okay, admin, I'm gonna give an admin's details, uh, password. So now it says welcome admin. This is the home page that I talked about, the index.php. This is the home page. So welcome admin, access functionalities, and then log out. Okay, so I'm gonna go into accessing functionalities. So this is the music admin.php page. Okay, so here uh, the admin has three options. He can display all the songs. He can also delete these songs here. And then he can search the songs by the partial or full name of an artist, a track, a genre, uh, an album. So this is how it's gonna display, whatever you search for. So if you search for something invalid that doesn't exist in the database, uh, it's gonna say no results found, naturally. Then there's this thing called advanced search for, for an admin, where it, you can search, you can narrow down your search based on title, album, artist, genre, and then search based on that. So if I give pop, it's gonna search for all the songs with the genre pop here. That's how it's gonna display it. Okay, so that's the advanced search option of an admin. So you also have an add song option for an admin. So I'm gonna to try to add a new song and I'll show you how that works. So I'm gonna just add in, um, okay, I'm just gonna put A, B, C, D. I'm gonna add in as um, six, five, and one. So here it's referring to the foreign keys. And I'm gonna add in a link for it and I'm gonna put in a track length and I'm gonna click on submit and the songs get added. So I'm gonna display all the songs now. And now you can see the last song has been added here. And then if you go back to the database, if you go to track, it will show you the song added as well. See, the 22nd song, ABCD was added by me right now. And then it also adds up the track in the track description for the 22nd song, it adds up the track length that I added as well. So this part is being linked for both the tables. So in the code part, I'll show you. Um, so I'll go back to admin.php. So here, same thing, we need to start a session based on a specific user. So this is the part. Um, and then I've created different functions for each of those, uh, each of those functionalities. So basically you can delete a song, right? So this is the function for deleting record. Here we're doing an Ajax action here. So I'll show you that page as well. And uh, this is adding a song to a playlist and uh, yeah, so those are the basic functionalities. This is the HTML part of it, where it displays all the functionalities. I showed you that. Then these are the database parts where searching a song. This is how it retrieves the song, select star from track. We're making an inner join between all the track, artist, album, and everything to get in the data from it. So that's how it's done. And this is advanced search. This is display all the songs from the library. And this is adding the song to a library. So that's the add song functionality. So. This is how you take the input from the screen and then when the song is added, so you select uh, that song and then you also check whether the attributes of these songs already exist. If it doesn't, then you insert that song into the database. And then uh, it'll display error message if it's unable to insert and uh, all those messages and conditions are handled. Then this, this is a way to display all the songs in a particular table. So this is uh, most of the admin functionalities. Okay, so um, I will show you the actions Ajax page where it starts, it takes your action. So whatever action, so if it was delete song, this is how the database gets altered. So this is deleting songs. And then uh, 
this is uh, updating songs, and this is getting the playlist, this is adding to a list, this is add to a new list, and this is how Actions Ajax works. So this is a query, and each of these queries are performed to the particular database, and it retrieves, if there's anything to retrieve, uh, it just performs the action as a void. Okay, so this is that um, admin functionalities as listed. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my logout uh, login page and I'm going to log in as a user and I'll show you what are the functionalities of a user and how are they different from a admin. Okay, so here, like I said, there's something called display songs. When I display all the songs, this is how it's shown. You can also play these songs. So, so as you see, one song can be played uh, only, uh, so basically, a song can be played uh, when another song is not currently playing. So only one song at a time is played. For that, we've added a JavaScript called Event Listener, where it allows only one song or one track to be played at a time. And then like, I, like we saw in admin, there was a delete function for a track, but here we cannot delete songs because this is a user, but we can add the songs to a particular playlist. So this is how you add songs to a playlist. I've already created a playlist here, so you can add it here, right here. And uh, it says song already in this playlist. So I already have a song, the same song in this playlist. So I can't add the same song. So I'll show you how to add a new song. So I'll just add this song to that particular playlist. Now it says song added to the playlist. I'll show you that playlist. So we will go to view playlist. This is another functionality in user where you can create playlists. You can delete playlists and you can edit playlists. So this is uh, my playlist that I created. I already had a few songs and now I added the last song here. I can also delete that song from the playlist. It's gone. So I'll show you how that works. So consists is the table which links the playlist ID with the track ID. So I'll show you the playlists that I have. So right now for my user that was, uh, okay, so the user that I had was 1002. Oh no, wait, the user that I had was hi. So one, the user ID one. And this had a playlist name called hi and the playlist ID I've given as nine. So let's go back to the consist table which links them. So for nine, we have three tracks, right? So nine, 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 we have the track seven, we have the track one and we have the track two. So that is exactly what is displaying here. So that's the consist table. So when you delete a value, it automatically gets deleted in the database as well. So that's how we've linked it. So we can also delete playlists as well. So if I happen to delete this playlist, uh, it says delete playlist, okay. So that playlist also gets deleted. So if I refresh the screen and if I show you the playlist, see the, the user one does not have any playlist here. As well, the playlist study was nine, right? So when we go back to consist and if we check, that playlist does not exist here. So the total implementation of linking the front end and the back end is implemented in our project completely. So like I said, there's a search option as well. This is a similar to the admin, but this is not advanced search. This is just search. So I can search for a particular name. I can search for half of a name. So I have an artist called Arct Arctic Monkeys. And if I just search for Arct Arctic, it just shows me the artist Arctic Monkeys and all their songs. So this is how it's done. If I search for something invalid, obviously it's going to show me no results found. Okay, so the last part of our project was the innovative experiment. So here what we're doing is we're doing sentiment analysis of the top 20 songs of the billboards uh, top 20 from the past 10 years, from 2008 to 2018. Uh, let me demonstrate that to you. So before I show you how it's actually done, we'll show you how to run the project, okay? So here in Innovative, I have the file, the billboard file. So I'll show you what the file looks like. So this is the billboard scrape.py. So here we are importing the required uh, packages. So uh, I have this thing called beautiful soap, which included all the fluids in the sentiment analysis part. So I'm importing that as a whole and uh, importing CSV. I'll tell you that later. So these are um, this, the loading the lexicons for the positive words to a set and returns that particular set. That's the function for uh, loading the lexicon. This is the analyzer part. This is words and this is total count. So this is going to extract the lyrics from each of those songs and it's going to do the total count of it. And here we have this thing called positive words.txt and negative words.txt. I'll show you what that is. So I'll go back to my uh, innovative page. So here I have a thing called negative words.txt, right? So here I've made a list of all the negative words that might appear in a particular song. So what it's going to do is it's going to 
compare each of these words with the lyrics of a particular song and try to find out how many positive words and how many negative words are there. So depending on that, it's going to make up a final score telling us if it's a negative or a positively inclined song. So these are the negative words and um, the similar way, these are the positive words and I have it here. Okay, so once that's done, we'll have to go back here. This is how what it's doing, see. So it's going to go through all the lyrics of the songs and it's going to calculate the number of positive words, number of negative words. It's going to do neutral and it's going to do total score. So this is where it's uh, extracting the songs and their uh, lyrics. So and then this is the way it's going to uh, convert the data into a table format. It's going to put it into a CSV file. So this is webscraping.data.csv. So when I've run that, okay, so this is how we run it. Uh, it was a billboard uh, scrape.py. It was a Python file that we created for this. So one second. So I have to give Python billboard scrape.py. So once that's done, it starts running and it starts searching for each of the top 20 songs for the past 10 years from 2008 to 2018. So basically what it's doing, it's taking up the lyrics from each of these songs and it's collecting it and it's going to make a CSV file. So this is what has happened. It takes uh, about five, 10 minutes to do. So I'm going to skip that and I'm going to show you the web scraping data CSV file that was formed due to this. So this is the final result that we got. So this is from 2008. It's going to show all the way to 2018 and it's going to show all these songs. It's ranks 1 to 20 and again 1 to 20 for each of those years. An artist name, song title, the number of words in the in the lyrics of those songs, positive marks, negative marks, neutral and total score. This is the sentiment analysis part of our project. So to incorporate it into our project, what we did is we installed another uh, Python library uh, called CSV to HTML and we converted that to uh, an HTML page and uh, linked that particular HTML page with our project. So right here. Sentiment analysis. So if I click on analyze, it's going to analyze it all and I'm going to put it here. Uh, so the same table in the CSV file which we observed, this is the final table for sentiment analysis of those songs. So it's going to show the rank, the artist name, song title, number of words in the lyrics, positive, negative, neutral and total score. So this is the end of our project. Thank you so much for watching.